state lawmaker says that Illinois state police should hold off on enforcing Illinois' gun ban until the situation's dealt with in the courts. Good morning, Springfield's Morning News. I'm Greg Bishop on 92.7 WMAY. Springfield's News and Talk. Of course, I've been checking some of the uh, latest statuses of the gun ban challenges in both state and federal court. Didn't see much movement at all yesterday, even in White County, where we're expecting a ruling on a temporary restraining order uh, in a case that impacts 1,700 plaintiffs. Uh, But uh, you do have that uh, Effingham restraining order that was issued back in January 20th that was appealed by the governor's office through the attorney general's office and then went to the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals where uh, briefs were filed and the appellate courts upheld the temporary restraining order this week uh, on behalf of around 866 plaintiffs. And that is something that's going to be instructive for other uh, court cases that come forward, including one in White County, which, again, we're waiting on a TRO order, whether it's going to be issued or denied, have yet to see that out of White County. But we also have Macon County as well where you've got uh, the case is going to be heard tomorrow, and that's the one brought by uh, State Representative Dan Calkins. So those are just the uh, the state cases, and again, the latest. We'll continue to update you each and every weekday morning here uh, on what's going on with these cases. Uh, but uh, those are the state cases. The federal cases as well, uh, not much movement that I was able to observe yesterday by checking all of the various uh, databases there are for uh, state and federal cases. So uh, we'll definitely be keeping you posted on that. But uh, in the ongoing conversation, I was able to uh, talk with State Representative Joseph Znowski yesterday at the Illinois State House, and he lives in the district that uh, may have been impacted by Illinois State Police enforcement of the gun ban. Uh, and he told me that uh, Illinois State Police should hold off enforcing Illinois' gun ban while the challenge plays out. So uh, you can see this, of course, if you follow me on Twitter, Bishop on Air, you'll see as I post news articles from the center square where I'm the associate editor for Illinois uh, you can get uh, kind of an idea real time as to what we're uh, what we're tracking but reading from that story with few details made public about enforcement efforts taken by the Illinois State Police over Illinois gun ban some saying that law enforcement agency needs to hold off until the courts find out what's going on here. So after the Illinois legislature approved the gun ban uh, on certain semi-automatic weapons and magazine capacities, uh, they moved forward and enacted it, with the governor enacting that. And remember, the governor said that state police, if they're not going to enforce this, then they're not going to be in their job. If you remember, he said that just after uh, signing that measure. Uh, Now, Monday, Illinois state police confirmed to me that they have enforced the gun ban in one particular uh, seller. State Representative Joseph now when I talked with him yesterday, uh, he indicated that uh, he's aware of that situation, but he uh, has yet to get any other further detail. Uh, and he also had some suggestions for what Illinois State Police should be doing here. So uh, here's State Representative Joseph Znowski, a Republican from Rockford. I only know of one incident uh, that was in uh, Winnebago County of a, a gun store that uh, is undergoing some sort of enforcement or some sort of action by the state police. And, um, you know, it's, it's concerning, obviously. Uh, I wasn't a supporter of the, the gun ban, and I think there's a lot of legal and constitutional issues. There's, of course, court battles uh, waging. Temporary restraining order uh, has been approved by an appellate court. And so, um, you know, it would be much better if the state police would hold off, let some of these legal proceedings uh, play out. Um, But uh, I don't know any more details about that particular investigation, but it, it sounds like they are starting to actively enforce this. Well, you know, quite frankly, I don't know what information has been put out by the state police. Uh, have these entities been notified? I mean, these are businesses that have been operating. You know, uh, these uh, guns, you know, were legal as of uh, the day before the legislation being signed. And uh, so was there even appropriate amount of time given uh, for them? And plus, you know, on a financial side, they have inventory that they purchased. You know, what they have with their suppliers is uh, you know, their own agreements and, and how that all pans out. Uh, it, there's a lot of unknowns there. But uh, again, I think because it's going through the court system right now, state police and, and law enforcement agencies, as we've seen with sheriffs, uh, announcing that they're going to hold back uh, and have concerns about the unconstitutionality of it. So uh, Sosnowski says he wasn't sure what kind of information Illinois State Police had been sending out to gun stores. So I asked Illinois State Police uh, for some of that information, and they told me yesterday that on January 10th, the Illinois State Police did send all licensed gun dealers in Illinois 
details about the gun ban. They said, quote, in addition to communications with federal firearms licensees, Illinois State Police is developing a public outreach campaign to promote awareness of the act. The public outreach campaign will include information how individuals who possess assault weapons before the law was signed can be in compliance. ISP is currently drafting rules how that compliance process will work. So actually, it was one of the last things that was added to the law before it passed was a little provision at the tail end of the hundreds uh, or so page bill uh, where it essentially said, you know, Illinois State Police must uh, have some kind of communication outreach program uh, to explain what's going on here. Now, the registration, that opens up October 1st, and those who have certain semi-automatic weapons defined as assault weapons in the law will be required to register those with state police by January 1st, 2024. Of course, all of that is uh, up to what happens in the courts. So uh, we've got state cases, got federal cases and all of that. So in Winnebago County, and I'm getting other indication that and this is this is all uh, not confirmed because Illinois State Police have yet to give us all of the details, uh, though I have requested a, through a Freedom of Information Act request uh, details about enforcement or calls about enforcement of the state's uh, Protect Illinois Communities Act, which is the, the gun ban, the, the, the act's title for the gun ban, uh, and uh, had yet to get those details. So I'll, I'll keep you posted, but people online saying it was a gun store in Winnebago County that apparently told uh, a federal official of sorts like the atf official that they weren't going to comply and then all of a sudden that individual store has state police show up and then the rest is what we're seeing posted online in various uh chat groups uh even on uh youtube uh comments and i'm getting you know flooded with comments on facebook as well which by the way you can always send tips my way bishop on air at gmail.com uh but uh, i did reach out to the winnebago county uh, state's attorney's office and uh uh, they did respond and say that they sent letters to federal firearms licensees holders that said, while the constitutionality of the law is being litigated in courts, the measure is presumed constitutional unless and until a court having jurisdiction applicable to Winnebago County finds the law unconstitutional. As such, the Winnebago County State's Attorney said, I have a legal and ethical obligation to enforce the law and will do so if necessary. And that's Jay Handley, the uh, uh, Winnebago County State's Attorney's Office, that in a letter that uh, I was able to get from his office. Uh, so again, a lot of moving pieces here. Uh, and uh, I'll just kind of reiterate what uh, Joe Sisnowski had to say. Uh, and I think it's uh, important to hear that again uh, about uh, what exactly to do um, about enforcement of this particular law, which if a court finds that it's unconstitutional, then you've got individuals I, whose constitutional rights I only may know. have been uh, infringed here. So, uh, you know, how do we how do we move forward with this, ensuring that uh, if it is unconstitutional, people's rights aren't violated? I only know of one incident uh, that was in uh, Winnebago County of a, a gun store that uh, is undergoing some sort of enforcement or some sort of action by the state police. And, um, you know, it's, it's concerning, obviously. Uh, I wasn't a supporter of the, the gun ban, and I think there's a lot of legal and constitutional issues. There's, of course, court battles uh, waging. Temporary restraining order uh, has been approved by a, an appellate court. And so, um, you know, I, I, it would be much better if the state police would hold off, let some of these legal proceedings uh, play out. Um, but uh, I don't know any more details about that particular investigation, but it, it sounds like they are starting to actively enforce this. So again, uh, Joe Sisnowski, a Republican from Rockford, uh, chatting with me briefly at the Illinois State House. Uh, we've got to talk about the DuPage County Sheriff coming up next. And anytime you want to sound off, uh, you can do so live and local here on WMAY. It's real simple. You just call in 217-629-7970. Again, 217-629-7970. That's the phone number here on WMAY, uh, where you can uh, chime in and uh, have your voice heard. All right, it's now 619. Let's take a quick break. Somebody on YouTube asks, what are your thoughts, Bishop? Well, I appreciate you asking, uh, and maybe I'll share you my thoughts over a drink sometime, but really, I'm just here to report out what's happening, get you the most straightforward facts possible, because uh, what I think is really irrelevant. I mean, <laughs> when you get to the grand scheme of things, I'll tell you what I think. I think that this is a major issue that has huge implications. All right, that's pretty innocuous, uh, but still, um, I think 
accurate. Uh, Springfield's Morning News. I'm Greg Bishop on 92.7 WMAY. Springfield's News and Talk now 626. And we're live and local. All right. And you can chime in at 217-629-7970. I would like to hear what your thoughts are. Uh, so feel free to call in. Again, 217-629-7970. When we're live and local. Or you can email me, bishoponair at gmail.com. Uh, it's another way that we can uh, uh, communicate and interact. All right. So uh, let's talk about Sheriff uh, James Mendrick, who is the DuPage County Sheriff. Uh, he is the, um, the sheriff of the second most populated county in Illinois. All right. Right after DuPa- uh, right after Cook County is DuPage County. So uh, if you recall, last week uh, there was a DuPage County board meeting. Uh, I had one of my reporters, Andrew Hensel, cover that. Uh, he said there were 300 people there. Most seemed to be those who were supporting Mendrick in his stance to not enforce the state's gun ban. All right. Uh, The state's ban on certain semi-automatic weapons and certain capacities of magazines. So Mendrick had said that uh, he's not going to use his resources to go door to door to be checking on individuals who have uh, not registered their firearms with Illinois State Police. Uh, So that was a position he took. It's very similar to all the other positions of 90 plus sheriffs of 102 counties in Illinois have taken. So uh, interesting to see that Uh, again, uh, the back and forth, the debates that, that was heard in front of the DuPage County Board, supporters of Mendrick saying that he's upholding the Constitution, opponents of Mendrick saying that he should be censured. Uh, You've got uh, DuPage County officials that were saying that uh, they need law enforcement to enforce the laws. Uh, But then this week, there was uh, a statement put out by uh, those who were critical of Mendrick, including uh, U.S. Congressman Sean Kasten, uh, who had previously said that Mendrick needs to rescind his comments. Uh, Kasten then came out and uh, thanked Mendrick and others of DuPage County for coming together with a common mind. I'm kind of paraphrasing here, but even the uh, DuPage County um, state's attorney and uh, the DuPage County chairman, uh, former state rep Deb Comroy, a Democrat, uh, they, they put out statements uh, talking about that that joint Uh, effort and passion to keep DuPage County safe. Uh, That was seemingly uh, reported by other outlets as Mendrick uh, backing away from his comments he had previously made about his position of the state's gun ban and how he's going to enforce it or not enforce it. So he did put out a statement on uh, social media, uh, and this was uh, just a couple of days ago. We had yet to get to it, but he says, do not listen to the media. I was not threatened to be censured or anything else during this meeting. The meeting that I had with state's attorney Bob Berlin and county board chair Deborah Conroy yesterday was the first day three tiers of government came together in discussion of this topic. We all agree that our police should not be going to the homes of our law-abiding residents to harass them over gun registration. They get the issues. We will not be sending deputies out proactively to take your lawfully owned guns. Please remove that stressor from your lives. What we will be doing is enhancing penalties for those that use guns illegally in the commission of crimes. Those that uh, those that commit gun crimes in DuPage County will find out that they're serious in how they take gun offenses. If you are not using a gun to conduct criminality, you have nothing to fear from us. If you use uh, a gun uh, to harm someone within DuPage County, we are united to make sure that you endure every possible penalty that we can bestow upon you for your crimes. Uh, he goes on to say that uh, we've reached... Uh, a time where uh, we must protect our citizens from illegal gun use and at the same time allow law-abiding citizens the ability to defend themselves. The media will make up their own version of this interaction to create conflict, but the truth is that we all agree on the difference between lawful citizens and criminals. So again, that's uh, the DuPage County Sheriff seeming to make crystal clear his position there, that uh, he's not going to be using resources to go after individuals in DuPage County for not registering their firearms with state police. They will, however, be going after individuals who are using firearms in illegal ways, uh, like harming somebody or in the commission of a crime. 
Uh, so we'll see how all this continues to play out. Again, staying close attention to uh, you know the state level cases. We're still waiting on the White County TRO to to either be issued or not be issued. We're waiting on even a federal court. Uh, the Naperville case, where a challenge against the city of Naperville was expanded to include the the state law. Uh, we're waiting on a federal judge to issue some kind of uh, TRO or next steps in that case. Uh, so a lot of a uh, lot of moving pieces still. We'll update you each and every weekday morning here on WMAY. Uh, but coming back, um, some other gun issues that we got to tackle, uh, and that includes stuff going on over in California, a new report that was released by the ATF, and so much more. So stay tuned. It's here with Springfield's. Anytime you want to sound off when we are live, you can call in at 217-629-7970. That's the phone number here for Springfield's Morning News. I'm Greg Bishop on 92.7 WMAY. You can also find me on Twitter or Facebook or YouTube. Just search Bishop on Air and we can connect that way. Or off air, you can email me, bishoponair at gmail.com. Talk in this hour as we have each and every 6 o'clock hour. Uh, uh, we open up the program, just giving an overview of where we're at in the ongoing debates around the Second Amendment, which is a well-regulated militia being necessary for the security of a free state. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. And it's right there next to the First Amendment, right to free speech, free press, free assembly, free religion. Uh, so obviously um, up there with other civil rights. Uh, but uh, some seeing it's threatened here in the state of Illinois with a ban on certain types of semi-automatic weapons that uh, a lot of people say are commonly held, as well as a ban on commonly held magazine capacities. But what's it look like across the country? Uh, well, a uh, recent story indicates that uh, we have the first sweeping federal gun crime report that's been released after years. This coming from federal agency like the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives, also known as the ATF. Uh, but uh, this type of data hasn't widely been available before, but the Associated Press reporting that uh, the data uh, on this, this, this topic uh, shows a shrinking turnaround, they say. Uh, between the time a gun was purchased and when it was recovered from a crime scene. So the documents show a, quote, spike in the use of conversion devices and also growing seizure of what people call ghost guns, but others say are unserialized, personally manufactured guns. Even the ATF on their website, and we've talked about this in the past, uh, whenever Illinois uh, proceeded with their ban on these self-made, no serial number firearms. The ATF on their website, I don't have that directly in front of me, but we've gone through it before, says that uh, that's that's legal. As basically, from my understanding, is if you are able to be a gunsmith and you can make your own firearm, you can make your own firearm. Uh, and uh, the only the only time that uh, you might cross the bounds of law is if you were to transfer that firearm to somebody else. Uh, and you can't do you can't sell that to somebody. You can't transfer that to somebody. So uh, interesting to see that the, the ATF has that. But then you've got states like Illinois that are, are banning uh, so-called ghost guns. Uh, but uh, the ATF report here says that there's growing seizure of those particularly privately made firearms. Um, also, they uh, they report that. Um, 54% of guns that police have recovered in crime scenes in 2021 have been purchased within three years, which they say is a double-digit increase since 2019, uh, at least the time frame there. Uh, so again, uh, within three years of a firearm being purchased, they're saying uh, more than half are uh, ending up in crimes after three years from when they were purchased. Uh, the number of new guns overall in the U.S., I don't think anybody's surprised by this, especially when you see uh, the spike in the number of uh, background checks, uh, especially in a state like Illinois, where, yes, we have a lot of background checks when it comes to firearms because we have a FOID card, which the firearm owner identification card has uh, the uh, the issue, uh, you know, regularly kind of revolving background checks for Illinois citizens who have that firearm owner identification card. So we see an increased number of uh, gun background checks in the state of Illinois. But uh, we've seen across the country an increase in the number of people uh, purchasing firearms. And the ATF report shows that that number has grown significantly uh, during the time as gun sales shattered records, they say, during the 
COVID-19 pandemic. So that's uh, one of the national stories out. Another national story uh, that deals more with California, which, of course, is the most populated populated state. Also, uh, a very uh, Democrat-controlled state. Uh, They had to, in San Francisco, issue the first concealed carry permit application following the U.S. Supreme Court's ruling. This coming from the Epic Times. San Francisco Sheriff's Office recently approved a concealed carry weapon permit application, which allows individuals to carry concealed weapons months after the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that the right is protected under the U.S. Constitution. Listen, we saw this in Illinois. I actually produced a documentary, and if you do subscribe to me on YouTube, or even if you don't, you can find the documentary I produced, I believe it was 2014. It's hard to believe it was that long ago. Wow. Um, But uh, it's called Gun Free Zone, the movie, and it goes over uh, several years worth of uh, the legislature here in Illinois having to... Uh, write a law to allow for concealed carry in the state of Illinois because the courts had said Illinois' prohibition on allowing people to carry a firearm outside of the home was unconstitutional. So Illinois had to, by a certain date, pass a, a law that allowed for concealed carry or else it would have been constitutional carry, meaning open carry, concealed carry, doesn't matter. The Second Amendment was your gun permit. Well, lawmakers in Illinois didn't want that to happen, so they passed a concealed carry law. That was back in, geez, uh, 2012, 2013, 2014 when it was implemented. I might have some of my uh, dates. Maybe, no, maybe it was 2011. I'm trying I'm trying to think now. <laughs> so I'll have to go back and check my records on that. But yeah, search Gun Free Zone, the movie. I think it's probably due time to get an update on that, especially with everything we've seen in the past uh, decade uh, concerning uh, gun rights and uh, the Second Amendment, uh, especially after uh, what we saw last month of the governor enacting uh, Illinois' gun ban. But in San Francisco... San Francisco approves the first concealed carry permits following the U.S. Supreme Court's ruling. Uh, so the uh, the San Francisco Chronicle reported that uh, they can confirm that we did approve the first CCW permit on Friday. Uh, it's according to an employee uh, from the sheriff's office there in San Francisco. Um, and uh, it goes on to talk about how the judgment the Supreme Court ruled in the New York State Rifle and Pistol Association versus Bruin case. That case uh, has uh, Americans, again, reaffirming that the constitutional right to carry firearms in public. Uh, but you've got uh, the the applicants who are putting their applications in in San Francisco. They're having to wait now seven months to actually be able to exercise that right uh, after the U.S. Supreme Court made that happen. So the majority opinion that was written by Justice Clarence Thomas last summer, it pointed out that it makes no sense to deny American citizens the right to defend themselves outside of their homes. Confining the right to bear arms at the home would make little sense given the self-defense is a central component to the Second Amendment right itself, Thomas wrote. Uh, So Gavin Newsom He's uh, getting ready to sign some uh, new legislation that uh, does a whole host of things. Uh, he held a news conference yesterday uh, to, to talk about the new legislation that California has brought up. And uh, part of that includes raising the legal age for individuals who want to purchase firearms to 21 and requiring 16 hours of training. Now, the bill would also prohibit loaded guns at uh, governments, courts, other public buildings, schools, airports, public transportation hubs, churches, and other sensitive locations. Uh, This is something that we've seen here in Illinois, a lot of debates about where individuals are allowed to carry their concealed firearm. And in order to legally carry a concealed firearm, you have to go through training, you have to get the state police to issue that concealed carry license, but you have to be cognizant of the laws and where you can and cannot carry, and that includes you cannot carry on places of public transportation. You cannot carry when you're in a public park. You cannot carry uh, when you're in uh, certain other public settings, like a parade, for instance. But critics of these laws, they will quickly point out, you can have all the laws in place you want. Criminals are still going to violate the law. Like, for instance, Brandishing a semi-automatic rifle on a rooftop uh, to systemically kill people who are down below, uh, which we've seen uh, happen uh, way too many times. Uh, So how do we get a handle of all of this? Uh, Let's go ahead and take a call. Good morning. You're on WMAY. Hey, Bishop. You kind of touched on something that kind of has me concerned uh, with 
with uh, Newsom is uh, proposing out in California the, the training. That's what I fear is going to happen here in Illinois. You know, in order for us to own our uh, quote unquote assault weapons, uh, we're going to have to spend, you know, hundreds of dollars and probably go through tens of hours of training just to um, exercise our Second Amendment rights. There's no other right that we have to. I don't have to go to school and become a uh, linguistic person to uh, exercise my freedom of speech. Well, and listen, I think part of the argument that was heard in the Effingham County case and part of the argument around why a TRO was upheld by an appellate court this week was about that issue of training. Illinois' semi-automatic ban, it exempts law enforcement, retired and active, uh, people in security uh, types of operations, uh, wardens, jailers and such, uh, because uh, apparently the state said, hey, they get training. They're trained. And Attorney Thomas DeVore uh, fired back, no pun intended, uh, that, well, if jailers and wardens and police officers can get training, then why can't the regular citizen match that training and be exempt from the law? So, yeah, it's an interesting point you bring up there. Um, so we'll be monitoring that as it uh, as it advances as well. Appreciate the call. It is Springfield's Morning News. I'm Greg Bishop on W.